Not long ago, I created a video on using Visual Studio Code for writing documentation, which a lot of you liked. Now, I want to revisit that topic, but this time also using GitHub Copilot. If you're new to Copilot or don't have it set up, check out this video here and circle back because in this video, we're going to see how Copilot can simplify the process of writing documentation. In this video I did before, I covered the basics of using Markdown in VS Code for documentation. And in this one, I introduced Copilot and how it's used with a variety of coding languages. But can Copilot be used for writing Markdown for some forms of documentation? Well, before we could get into that, I should mention that there's an array of documentation types software engineers write, which include readmes, API documentation, bug reports, installation docs, release notes, functional and technical specifications, testing docs, and much more. So let's use Copilot and see how it could assist us with our markdown for a few of these. So right now I'd like to create a readme file, specifically one that could be used as a template. So since it's gonna be a template, we'll want it to have a project name and I'm just gonna leave the term project name up here and just add in readme. So you could already see that Copilot is trying to predict for almost anything that I'm trying to type. Right below this project name, it first said project description, which is what I want, but I want the heading to be a little bit smaller. So I'll be using three pound signs for the heading description. So I'm going to say, use this project readme. And that's pretty good. It ends with to describe your project in detail, but I want it to say, to create a readme for your project. And you can see how it looks on the right hand side here for the preview. Now I'm going to want to add an image to lighten this up so that it doesn't look so boring. So I'll just drag my image file that I already have prepared and place it right over here. And so now within a readme file, there are going to be several sections to it. So I'm going to number my sections and see if Copilot could start suggesting other sections. Usage for a particular project is something that could be found in a readme. In addition to contributing, just after adding just three letters, it knew to add contributing. And that's pretty good. What else? Credits. I'll tab to add that. And right after just adding the first two sections, it already knows, okay, he wants to add more sections, so let's go ahead and suggest some more. So after credits, license, that's another good one. I will add that. Questions is good also, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and actually want to add version history. Just with a V, it already predicted version history. That is really great. Now under usage, I'm just going to add within brackets, just a description what goes in here. And that will be instructions on how to use this project. So just by having added that, now when I go to contributing and I hit enter, it now suggests instructions on how to contribute to this project. And that's the magic of Copilot. I mean, it's not perfect, so you do have to be the pilot itself. It is called Copilot for a reason, and it makes suggestions, but you have to be the main one to make sure that the suggestions make sense. So for three credits, credit to the project, that makes sense. And I'll do the same for license and also version history. And within a few seconds, we already have a nice little template set up. Now, just to make this a little bit easier on the eyes, sometimes I like to use emojis if it makes sense. So for usage, I'll add an emoji of a worker that would use it. And for contribution, now Copilot saw that I use an emoji, it wants to start suggesting emojis to me. I'm not sure what this is right here. Oh, okay, it's two hands. And that makes sense for contributing. You'd wanna shake someone's hand after they made some contribution. Now for credits, a thank you symbol, license, we have a document, and version history, another document. Maybe we'll try to change this and make this some type of a book. So using Copilot, it was able to help us create this readme template by assisting us in not only writing the title, but each section of the readme, in addition to the instructions for each section. And last but not least, suggesting emojis. Okay, in this next demonstration, what I want to do is show you how Copilot could assist in writing some documentation that's for installation. 
specifically software. And in this case, we're going to want to install MySQL database. And I have an image already prepared that I'll just drag and drop right over here. Let's change this to installing MySQL. And let's just start with the steps. Right after I put number one, immediately tells me, hey, you want to install MySQL? You're going to want to download it first. That's pretty good. Now it suggests the URL that I need to go to, so I'll accept that. Now it tells me to select the MySQL for Windows. Why don't we go ahead and just change this for Mac? Now since it's a Mac, it is a DMG file that I need to download. And right now it's not suggesting anymore, so why don't we go to step two. And now we're ready to just install it. it tells us to open up the DMG file, double click on the installer tells us to follow the instruction. We need to set a password for the root user. We'll click finish. And now number three, to start MySQL. We're on a Mac. We have to open up the system preferences. Looking good so far. Click on MySQL. Click on start MySQL server. We'll need to enter our passwords. Now it's saying to click on server again. Now I'm writing this documentation down, but I'm not actually going through the steps. I'm trying to feel it out. And of course, I'll have to go back to make sure that all these steps work accordingly. But we're getting the bulk of the work done. Verify MySQL, open up the terminal. It gives us the command that we need to enter. Next, we need to enter our password and then run the command to display our databases. And now it's going to suggest a table of what we should see. So it's actually drawing it out using different characters and I'm tabbing to accept it. And this is the database, line 30, I'll tab and continue hitting enter and tab. And this is a text representation of the schema that we should see, and then we can quit. So as you can see, we got a good chunk of the documentation down. It might not be perfect. I actually need to step through this to make sure that there's no steps that are not needed or there's additional steps that I need to add to make sure that this works as I expect it to. But a lot of time has been saved with the assistance of Copilot. And that's it. So let me know in the comments how you might use Copilot for documentation. Thanks for watching. And if you got value out of this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, check out some of these other Copilot videos here.